Welcome to the short executive knowledge lecture on topic seven, paper three, covering over the counter derivatives trading, reporting and clearing. Now, this is an interesting topic because previously it was only two sections, as you see on the screen, section one and two. And there was usually only one question. Now, recently, there still has only been one question from topic seven, but the material has been expanding. We now have sections three and four. So I would say guaranteed one question. You never know. Nowadays, you might get two. I will emphasize the important points to help you understand the core material you need to know and to sit the exam. Copy of the study notes you see on the screen will, can be downloaded from the Executive Knowledge website under Paper 3 Resources. And as ever, I strongly recommend that you supplement this learning with question practice. Uh, and we have hundreds of practice questions on the platform examinator.online. As you see, Topic 7 has four sections. The first, reporting and record keeping obligations for over-the-counter derivative transactions. And then the second section is clearing and record keeping obligations for OTC derivative transactions. The way to, to view this is that the first section is looking at reporting, reporting of OTC derivative transactions and keeping records of the reporting. And the second section is looking at, as we'll discover, mandatory clearing of OTC derivative transactions and the record keeping of those clearing transactions. Now, OTC derivative transactions did not need to be cleared previously. Um, they were over the counter. You had two counterparties and the counterparties would uh, settle among themselves. But then we had the problems of 2008 and all the mess in the over-the-counter derivative markets. Uh, and that is why in different uh, jurisdictions, they have legislated in this area and Hong Kong is no exception. Section three looks at conduct requirements in relation to OTC derivative transactions. So in Hong Kong, as we'll discover, the, the rules came in 2015, 2016, uh, and then conduct requirements followed and then section four followed margin requirements for non-centrally cleared OTC derivative transactions. Now, if we are uh, trading futures on an exchange which are centrally cleared, uh, we have rigid requirements with regard to margin. Uh, but with over-the-counter derivative transactions, uh, traditionally these uh, these regulations just did not exist and, and hence the risk. And so that is why we now have margin requirements added on. We'll go through each of these sections. Uh, I will explain where they've come from and uh, as best I can what they mean. Uh, but I would always bear in mind this topic is going to be one maximum two questions. So I, I, I wouldn't be uh, spending uh, an enormous amount of time on it. Now, the introduction with re regard to the reporting and record keeping, uh, just as I've said, and I'll just read out to make it clear, there have been an international effort to reduce systemic risk in over-the-counter derivative markets as a result of the global financial crisis of 2008. And there are now requirements for OTC derivative transactions to be reported to trade repositories and cleared through a central counterparty. So section one, we're looking at the reporting. Section two, we're looking at the clearing. And there it is, since 10th July 2015, been a Hong Kong requirement for mandatory reporting and record keeping prescribed by the relevant rules. Now, please remember the topic uh, is with regard to the requirements for licensed corporations. Neither of these rules apply to registered institutions because the HKMA, a law is all over uh, registered institutions with regard to these areas. What is the scope of application for reporting and record keeping? Uh, well, there's five specified product classes, and there they are, interest rate swaps, foreign currency derivatives, equity derivatives, credit derivatives, and commodity derivatives. What are the reporting obligations? Well, the obligations arise when certain events occur, and that's the first three sub 
uh, bullet points, three sub bullet points under 1.3. Uh, I would say they're administrative, highly unlikely to be examined. But the last point on page 7.3, after a reporting obligation arises, and we'll see when that occurs in terms of monetary value, open and subsequent positions must be reported. Paragraph 1.4, top of page 7.4, the means and timing of reporting. Well, you report your position to the Hong Kong trade repository and that's operated by the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Now you may be surprised to see the Hong Kong Monetary Authority involved and not the SFC. No, this is all to do with the liquidity of the Hong Kong markets and that's overseen by the HKMA. You have to have uh, the trade repository membership uh, to make a report and the report must be made within two business days of the transaction, T plus two. Now, as we'll discover, you can be exempt, and we'll find out what the exemption criteria is in a moment. But a licensed corporation that ceases to be exempt will have a grace period of three months from the date it ceased to be exempt to submit the required information. What is the information you must report? We've listed it there under uh, paragraph 1.5. Uh, I've never seen that come up. But the next bullet point I have, very important and I'll read it out. So this is the second bullet, main bullet point under 1.5. The primary reporting obligation rests with the licensed corporation. However, if the transactions conduct on behalf of a group company, an affiliate, the group company may make the report. In such a case, the licensed corporation needs written confirmation from the group company to demonstrate compliance with the reporting requirement. Now that may seem very heavy. Read it, absorb it, because they have examined that point. Uh, who is it that reports? Uh, well, if it's the group company that reports, then the uh, Lice Corporation needs written confirmation. Now we come to the exemptions, which I think are, uh, is critical. A license corporation is exempt from the reporting requirement if the notional amount of all outstanding OTC derivative transactions does not exceed 30 million US dollars in aggregate over all product classes collectively. So if you have OTC derivative positions uh, where collectively they do not come to 30 million US dollars, you're exempt you don't have to report to the HKMA. However, if you go beyond 30 million US dollars, you must report and the exemption is lost permanently. So please bear that in mind. Record keeping obligations. This has been examined. Uh, transaction records must be kept for at least five years after the maturity date. That's the important point, after the maturity date, not the date that the position is set up, five years after the maturity date. And it doesn't have to be just Hong Kong positions. It can be positions you take overseas as well. Uh, the records must be sufficient to demonstrate compliance. Reporting requirements, fine. Where a LICE corporation is exempt from reporting, records should still be kept to justify the exemption. So be aware of those points because someone has written a question on it previously. Finishing off the reporting uh, requirements. Legal entity identifiers and unique transaction identifiers. It seems very, very detailed. Read through it, absorb it, because I have seen a question on legal entity identifiers, but only once. So it's an outside chance of a question. Now, consequences of breaching these rules, uh, you can be prosecuted in the court of first instance, maximum penalty of 5 million Hong Kong dollars. No mention of uh, jail time though. We move on to the second section and the second set of rules. And this is to do with clearing, mandatory clearing, clearing and record keeping. First section was reporting and record keeping. Now it's clearing and record keeping. Uh, the background, well, following on from the previous rules we've just seen, mandatory clearing uh, has been introduced for over-the-counter derivatives of a particular size, and we'll see the size in a moment. And we'll see that the first phase was introduced in 2016. So reporting and record-keeping introduced in 2015, uh, clearing and record-keeping 2016. What is the obligation and who do you clear through? 
Where an OTC derivative clearing obligation does exist, transaction must be cleared through a designated clearing counterparty within one day of the transaction. Who's, who are the eligible central clearing counterparties? Um, Recognise clearing houses under the SFO. We'll see there's one over the counting, over the counter clearing house in a moment. Persons authorised by the SFC. Well, let's just jump to who they are. Uh, the four sub bullet points Chicago Mercantile Exchange, Japan Securities Clearing Corporation, LCH, ClearNet Limited, and OTC Clearing Hong Kong Limited. Now, I've been told by a number of um, operators in Hong Kong that they often clear if they have to clear through their affiliates in London and New York. Uh, there's so far not many cases of mandatory clearing in Hong Kong, but I'm sure that will change. Now, what are the products subject to the clearing obligation? In the first instance, it is interest rate swaps. Three categories, fixed floating, 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 and overnight index swaps. Now we come to the exemption. Next bullet point. As the regulatory objective is to catch systemic risk posed by larger and more significant participants in the OTC derivative market. What that means is that they want to make sure that really big positions don't threaten the liquidity market, or the liquidity of the Hong Kong market by defaulting. Uh, then OTCD clearing rules only apply to positions of 20 billion US dollars or more. So if you're less than 20 billion US dollars, you don't come under the mandatory clearing requirement. Uh, okay. Nature of persons who are counterparties. I have seen this examined again, unfortunately. Uh, and as I say, each time I say I see it, I have seen it examined, it's been one question. For a transaction to be subject to the clearing obligation, either both counterparties to the transaction must be prescribed persons. Okay, so we need to know who prescribed persons are, or one counterparty is a prescribed person and the other is a financial service provider. So what you take from this is if either party is a prescribed person, then uh, you've got, you're subject to the clearing obligation. If one of the counterparts designates a financial service provider, that was in the second case, the clearing obligation falls on the prescribed person. So please remember, prescribed person, that's the party that is responsible for clearing. Pres who are prescribed persons? They include AFIs, authorised financial institutions, banks, licensed corporations, and others who are listed in the OTCD clearing rules as being subject to clearing obligation. Whoever they are, we don't need to worry. A financial service provider is a person actively engaged in OTC derivative transactions or OTC derivative products outside Hong Kong. Now, in the question I've seen, they, they didn't get into the location of the provider. They, they just named the party as a financial services provider. So uh, it, as crazy as it seems, please be aware of that material. Now, where the clearing obligation will not apply... Uh, when a transaction's been cleared under the laws of designated jurisdiction through a designated CCP, clearing the transaction in Hong Kong is not required. Okay, uh, another jurisdiction. Three further situations where the clearing obligation does not apply. Transaction with a group company member that is an exempt affiliate. Okay, so uh, in, intergroup. Transaction recorded in another jurisdiction. Ex that's an exempt jurisdiction transaction entered into a multilateral base to reduce operational counterparty credit risk. Now, you know, we're in among the weeds here. Um, I've never seen these points examined, but you never know. Uh, be aware of them. Record keeping obligations. We know it's five years, but five years from the termination or maturity of the transaction. That's what you need to remember. And once again, court of first instance, if you breach maximum penalty, five million Hong Kong dollars.